The 996 Porsche 911 is no doubt the unloved 911. Introduced in 1997, it marked a boundary point of change for not just the 911, but also Porsche as a whole. From this point onwards, the brand began to grow pretty significantly, but it really didn't have much choice, as during the 1990s, it faced financial troubles that were certainly starting to threaten its future. Of course, the 996 is famous for being the first water-cooled 911, with all its predecessors housing air-cooled engines. This made it unpopular with the enthusiasts, but for the 911 to survive, it was a change that had to be implemented, for emissions regulations were only becoming stricter. However, with that change came plenty of benefits. Now there was much more performance potential from that Porsche Flat 6, and these engines have been developed to an unbelievable level today. The 996 was also famed for its questionable looks, which I personally think have aged very well into a piece of design that is so unmistakably turn of the millennium. Today we're going to be meeting Mark who has a 2004 996 Carrera 4S Cabriolet. The 4S was introduced in 2002, with the Cabriolet model following a couple of years later. Featuring some of the body panels worn by the 996 Turbo, it carries immense road presence and of course houses a wonderful flat six engine, in this case a 3.6 litre unit producing 315 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. The sound is incredible and it feels like a perfect level of performance for the road. 0 to 60 comes in around 5 seconds and the top speed is 174 miles per hour. What more could a driver need? Okay, Mark, so you've brought down your 2004 996. Do you want to tell us a bit about why you bought the car? Yeah, um, so I've, whenever I've had second cars, and I've been fortunate enough to have a second car, I've wanted it to, to not be as functional as the main yeah, car. Yeah. Um, so key things for me were things like manual gearbox for yeah. the driving side of things, definitely convertible where yeah. possible. So uh, when I was looking, I was upgrading from a, a previous car, so a BMW Z3. Yeah, and, and great car. Again, key functional things, a little bit boring. It had to fit in the garage. Yeah. I physically had to fit into it. Yeah. Um, and, and Porsche is obviously a brand which is synonymous with kind of everyday usability, 100%. but also performance and, and reliability. And those were key things that were forefront in my mind when, when looking. Yeah. So there's, there's plenty of other other things that I'm sure we'll, we'll yeah, get into. Yeah, we'll get onto later on. But I mean, I mean, the 996 C4S in particular is an interesting model, isn't it? Um, this being obviously a later car, it's got the 3.6 litre flat six, which sounds incredible. Obviously, we'll hear that later on as well. But I think it's very usable performance. It's kind of that all kind of year round car, isn't it? That you could, in theory, use as a daily if you wanted to. Yeah, definitely. And it has, in some cases, got me out of a, yeah. a bit of a pickle when the main car has uh, not been working as it should do. And I've yeah. had to jump in this after not using it for a long period of time and and cover 100 200 miles and it's done it no issues at all for yeah. first time every time so again it's it's that functionality but it's if you class it as a supercar it's a functional supercar which you, you're not afraid to drive yeah I, I didn't want something which i thought well if i left it it's going to be um kind yeah. of damaged it's going to yeah be, exactly attract too much attention yeah but then also you want to be able to to use it and have some fun and yeah and use the loud pedal whenever yeah. you need to <laughs> which is the important thing of course exactly yeah, yeah I, I totally agree and I, th I think that's a good thing about it it's quite understated really in its design it's a very kind of minimalistic design particularly compared to the modern day stuff I mean you've only got to look at the kind of modern day 911s for example the GT3 in particular with its massive wings and yeah. aero pieces yeah. this is much more understated I have to say it's in beautiful condition how many miles have you done since you've owned it so I bought it uh, nearly five years ago um, and I think it was on around about 67,000 it's approaching 81,000 now so still pretty low so then really 30, isn't it 13,000 miles and, and most of those have come earlier on in my ownership with, with various things that have happened in the last couple of years then uh, I think between the last two consecutive MOTs it only did about five or six hundred miles yeah. yeah so hopefully with a bit of sun and yeah. with the right things let's hope this year's work, better <laughs> exactly right things work wise yeah. and, and world wise then I'll be able to use it absolutely a bit more. yeah no I'm sure it'll be fantastic to get out on the road again have you had to do much to it in that ownership period have you had to find any major repairs or any issues it is, I mean it's been fairly reliable uh, when I when I first got it um, I made sure that obviously it had the 
the kind of the the wear and tear things dealt with so it had brake pads and discs yeah. and, and new tires put on um two years into ownership not out of choice i had to do some fairly extensive works to uh, the cooling system right. uh, and in order to do that because uh, there was an issue with the water pipes you have to drop the engine um, and consequently whilst the engine was out i then chose to um, get some other work done so i got the clutch done at the same time okay, makes because, sense. because yeah. then it, you save on the labor of eventually having to drop the engine again anyway yeah so other than the kind of the, the daily wear and tear things and keeping it up to date service wise i'm, I'm not one really for modifying yeah cars. same here um, to be honest so. <laughs> yeah i like the oem stuff absolutely and i can see that as well like the way it's it's very very well kept very original car so yeah no really nice job with it and i take it there's no kind of major breakdowns or anything like that it's been reliable. no other other than the, the yeah. issue with the water cooling yeah and um that was uh it's been touch wood yeah uh, fairly trouble free yeah that's that german build quality coming through i think isn't it yeah yeah and, and you'll, you'll see when when we do some driving but it, it still feels solid yeah which for a car which is approaching 20 years old yeah is well you don't get that in some modern cars and no. it still really does feel nice and solid there's no kind of bumps and rattles yeah. it's, it really is a, a solid piece of engineering absolutely i think I, you've got to consider the fact that these cars as well have been driven hard a lot of their lives so to still be strong 20 years later 80,000 miles later it's very impressive isn't it um but yeah anyway uh, thanks very much for bringing it down should we jump out on the road and see what it's like yep let's do it cool So we're out on the road in the 996. Yeah. What a beautiful sound that is. It just roars, doesn't it, right through the rev range. Yeah, definitely. So it's right from the off, good sound. And then uh, there's usually a bit of a power band around three to 4,000 revs, yeah. where the characteristic bark yeah. of the 911. So yeah, it's uh, part of the sound, it's part of the atmosphere, really. Absolutely. I think it's so distinct as well, coming all from the rear. All the engine sound is from the rear, obviously, we've been having the engine out there. It's just very kind of unique to the 99, well, 911 experience in general, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. I have to say, it feels like it's riding this road really well. It's These roads aren't the best. These are your classic British B roads, quite bumpy, few undulations, but it feels very well damped and the suspension feels very, very capable. Yeah, I mean, you, you do notice how low down to the ground that you actually are. Yeah. But that's to be expected. Um, it is obviously a lot firmer setup than your, your, your average kind of normal run around car but absolutely again it deals with things and you like i say you can do long journeys in this yeah have some fun and still not come out with a, a crippled back yeah. right at the other end so um yeah it's definitely uh, definitely the all-rounder that we spoke about before yeah i think that's the beauty of it isn't it you really can just use it all year round if you want probably makes a great gt car as well i would imagine on long big long distances and things like that yeah definitely Plenty of torque, you can feel that. Yeah, I think one thing that surprises me is even with those 295 section rear tyres, you don't really feel the sort of back end moving around like you might expect. It seems to ride very well as if it's on more narrow rubber. Yeah, I mean, it's really planted. I mean, it is four wheel drive, so yeah. that's probably contributing to it, but it definitely feels, definitely feels firm and planted and you can't give it the give it some stick in the corners yeah. and you've, you've got a bit of confidence in it really whereas yeah, absolutely. in some other cars you, you're not yeah <laughs> yeah the way it rides you can just feel like so so stable and so level Yeah, that's all you can hear. <laughs> Gotta love it. I think the, the beauty of it is, is it's just such usable power. 
we're in this world now, aren't we, where everything is four, five, six hundred horsepower, potentially more. And let's be honest, you can never really use that kind of power on the roads. Whereas this, you can you can wring its neck out a bit, you can push on a bit, and you're not going crazy speeds. Yeah, it's it's one where the most kind of by most car, car standards these days, the 316 horsepower is is, is nothing special. No. Uh, however, 18 years or so ago, then with this, it, it would have been it would have been right up there, and still to the day, it's able to to hold its own. Like you say, it's functional, it's it's usable. Yeah, power. Uh, it's not too much that that you're scared of it, but equally. It's, it's plenty enough that you can you can use it. Absolutely. Yeah, I think speaking about the power, I think the 996 GT3 was only about 360. So there's not really a big gap. It's been 315, that being 360, whereas you think the modern day GT3's base are like 500. So it's just, just a different world. Yeah, and obviously there was the, the Turbo S that was yeah. uh, around at, at was these times as well. So was that, I think, around, like that. around that area, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can't even begin to imagine what that would feel like. Because these are light cars. Yeah. Still puts a smile on your face. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's one thing. So you've owned the car five years. I, I take it you're not bored of it. You still look forward to driving it, right? Oh, no, definitely not. It's, yeah. it's one of those things where, like you say, you, th there are plenty of downsides to, to owning second cars. But yeah. if you're fortunate enough to be able to do so, you get a day like this, everything's working, favourite song comes on the radio, yeah. whatever <laughs> it is, then hear the engine, there's definitely a, a smile on your face. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I can say for sure is this definitely rides better than my Z4 does. Just having that extra sophistication, I think, in suspension, it just seems to deal with the bumps a lot better. It's not very crashy, is it? It just seems to float a bit more over the surface. Yeah, it's, it's very solid and you, yeah. you do feel kind of really kind of planted to the ground again. That's probably the four wheel drive system contributing yeah. there, but with a smooth gearbox as well and comfortable seats, then what more do you want? Yeah, exactly. Does the gearbox feel good to use? It not yeah, crunchy or anything like no, that? No, as we've like I said, we replaced the clutch um, yeah. and it feels very kind of solid and and uh, kind of just clicks into, into place where it needs yeah. to. So it's perfect. Wouldn't get bored of that, would you? <laughs> not at all. talked a bit off camera about the uh, potential issues these engines have had uh, you know things like bore scoring and concerns about the IMS bearing and things but I think we kind of generally agreed didn't we that it's not maybe as big as an issue as people like to make out yeah it is obviously kind of the RMS and IMS things are the things that do crop up when you're doing your internet searching ahead of maybe purchasing one of these but yeah. like I say if if you've got a car that's 80,000 miles and, it, and it's and it's kind of well well used, well maintained, well looked after, then you would hope that it's a, it's a limited chance of those types of things happening. Yeah, absolutely. And I think even on the early Carreras, I think the percentage of cars that had IMS issues was so ridiculously small. Uh, but you know, it's just that classic thing of the internet likes to jump onto things, don't they? So. But yeah, I think you know regular servicing and all the usual service items. And I think you'll be you'll be fine, won't you? Really? Yeah, definitely. And it's it's one of those where, like I say, if you kind of look after it well and kind of maintain it, then um, it'll it'll look after you. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, thanks very much, Mark, for bringing down the car. I really do appreciate it. And uh, beautiful, beautiful example you've got. Um, sounds fantastic. It's everything I'd kind of hoped a 996 would be. This is obviously my first experience in a 996 or a 911. 
uh, for that matter. So yeah, thanks very much. Appreciate it. No worries. Always a, always a pleasure to have the car out. Yeah, indeed. The 996 is reaching modern classic status very quickly, and deservedly so in my opinion. I feel it's one of the remaining great Porsche bargains, with many models available for less than £20,000, yet still a wonderful sports car. The build quality of these cars seems to be at the usual Porsche level, and so it's likely going to be an easy thing to live with too. The 996 is certainly a car I lost to own at some point, and I truly feel it's one of the best modern classic buys out in the market at the moment.